Um, I think uh, we should get to the movie, but I, I want to see before we do that if did you? Um, if anybody here had any burning questions for uh, Mr. Zimmerman and his many years working on Star Trek, you in the hat like mine, right back there. Um, this is actually related to Deep Space Nine. Was that Deep Space Nine, was working on that show uh, more of a, a challenge because it wasn't set on a, um, a starship? Did you have this, you were allowed to go back? Was working on Deep Space Nine more of a challenge? Uh, yes. Uh, well, back up a little bit. We started off talking about Andy Probert and, and uh, Rick Sternbach having been hired before I was hired. And uh, they had set the tone for the next uh, generation uh, bridge, and uh, I inherited from Star Trek the Motion Picture all the all the standing sets that were there uh, on uh, stage eight and nine at the Paramount. Um, since they uh, they done the, the Motion Picture, um, they they just closed up the stage and, and left uh, all those sets standing. So I was uh, uh, only give them a certain amount of money to, to spend on this uh, pilot for next generation. So uh, pretty much the rest of the sets other than the bridge were uh, knockoffs of uh, standing sets. In other words, I had to adapt uh, a, a different look. Uh, Gene wanted it to look like a high regency hotel. Um, literally, I mean, he, he used those words. And there was a point at, at, at which the there was no real uh, captain's chair. And this is obviously way before we started shooting it. But everybody was going to sit around the conference table. Uh, for a director, that would be deadly dull. And I, I think the, uh, the director of the, of the, uh, the pilot uh, uh, put his foot down about that, and we went back to having having a captain's chair. Well, they did have a table on the other. Yeah. Well, we had we did have the, the ready room and that. Uh, had it had that curved table that that was that was uh, pretty much dictated by the shape of the ship and we tried to put it uh, physically behind the the, uh, the bridge uh, it wasn't originally but we were able to do it when we moved all the sets from one stage to another uh, at the end of the first season um, I lost my train of thought here oh deep space nine was uh, was a blank uh, canvas and that was that was terrific because I didn't have any uh, preconceptions uh, already agreed upon by uh, uh, the producers and already uh, sketched up and, and handed to me to, to, to figure out how to make. Um, so uh, it had it had quite another uh, uh, problem to solve. The uh, original. Uh, philosophy was that this station had been built over a period of several hundred years over uh, uh, with, with many cultures, like a Tower of Babel that, that had been built by Cardassians and Bajorans and, and Romulans and uh, who knows. Uh, I, I, I think uh, all the treatments that we got for scripts were, you know, were that the people couldn't communicate with each other. They, they spoke different languages, came from different planets, and yet they had all some finger in the pie. They were all part of this Deep Space Nine station. And so we spent about three months, literally, and, and uh, it was almost all a waste of time, except that in doing so, we, we put together the things that we thought were right about the philosophy of that station. Uh, Anyway, when Rick saw the sketches of what was basically a hodgepodge of space junk uh, made into a space station, he didn't like it. He, he didn't like it at all. He, he did a, a whole 180 as far as telling us what he wanted. He said he wanted the slickest thing, not the most cumbersome, rusty old uh, bucket. He wanted the slickest thing and the most alien thing that he could um, that he could uh, get us to envision for him. So. With that in mind, we, we, we made a, a, again, just kind of an autocratic decision that it was made by the Cardassians and made with uh, Bajoran labor from the planet as uh, they enslaved the people to mine the minerals there, take them to the station and refine them and then send them off to their 
home planet. So um, we decided the Cardassians were about as close to Nazis as uh, we would get in space, and that they would be uh, uh, authoritarian, uh, uh, totalitarian uh, regime. They would uh, be very militaristic, that they would like things in sets of threes. So if you look down on the Deep Space Nine, it looks like a Mercedes emblem. It's got oh. three, three quadrants. Uh, it, it has uh, three rings, it has uh, 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 three uh, arms that hold everything together and become uh, docking ports for the various uh, ships. And uh, with that in mind, with those kind of uh, uh, parameters to deal with, we, we designed something that looked a lot like a gyroscope and then we find it from there until until we got what you see now. Uh, I had some terrific uh, sketch artists working on it, and uh, Rick Sternbach was working on it, and, and he had done a surface treatment that was pretty much, uh, you could look at it and say, oh, that's Rick Sternbach, that's his work. It was basically what we would have called tank parts. You know, a lot of, a lot of early models were made out of uh, World War II and, and uh, beyond, like uh, the other conflicts in the, in the world, uh, where plastic tank kits uh, are, are on the shelves of the model companies and the, the early model makers uh, doing space uh, used tank parts to, to build everything. And uh, uh, so Rick did those kind of designs, but then I had another sketch artist that, that just blew me away. He brought, a, he brought a, a sketch in showing all these depressions in this really slick body and all the tank part kind of stuff was down in those depressions. And that's what, this, that's what we ended up with. And we ended up with a, with a really slick but very industrial looking um, space station. I think it's unique and I think it, it's one of the characters uh, in the, like the Enterprise is a character in the drama that, the station's really important. And, uh, Brazil uh, Fabrication, uh, a company I don't think is in business anymore, did the model. Uh, the first model was six feet around. I think we did probably four models of different sizes, and we did one model that was only half of the station, so the camera could get into places that you couldn't, you couldn't get into if you were looking through the other the other part of the station, and uh, that, that station was the probably the last time we used a combination of physical models and CGI. But you know, you know Enterprise, uh, excuse me, uh, Deep Space Nine went the full seven years, so it was uh, you know, we we were able to refine that quite a lot. In the first season, we couldn't afford a balcony that you could walk on, so. When we were down on hiatus and we got some more money from the studio, we put the balcony on. It, and, uh, it was always a it was always a, a tough show to budget because there were so many aliens. They all had to have costumes. They all had to have makeup, and the makeups had to be reinvented for every new culture. And they were constantly going to to uh, new cultures and seeing seeing new uh, aliens. And it, it was very creative. We, uh, those seven years went so fast because we lived and breathed that show. I kind of forgotten it <laughs> until you asked me that question. It, it's still my favorite show of all of Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love Deep Space Nine. Go Cisco. Go <laughs> uh, Cisco. Um, well, that's all we have time for because uh, we, we want to get you home early enough. Uh, see you next week for the Star Trek movie and 2009, and thank you for two decades of designing Star Trek.